All right, boys, exciting day. Um, one that I wasn't even sure was gonna happen. It's been a long time coming, but I'm excited to finally be able to talk about the new Articat Catalyst chassis. As you guys know, I've owned two Procross chassis sleds. My family's had quite a few Articats over the years. Um, it's probably one of my favorite brands. I know that might be surprising for some to hear, but uh, ever since I was a kid, I always, green's my favorite color, was drawn towards Articats, so. Um, I'm always rooting for them to succeed and keep moving forward, so I'm super happy to see this day finally come. First, we'll start off with kind of what's new. I didn't want to make this video until I got to see the sleds in person, and I was finally able to do that, as you can see. I just wanted to kind of get an idea of the actual size of the sleds, kind of how each part comes together, the overall profile of it in person, things like that. So first things first, there's no more thousands, so it's not gonna be the 6,000, 8,000, 9,000 series of sleds, it's gonna be a 600 and 800 if that's what they develop, um, so on and so forth. So kind of in Articat's words to keep that less confusing for the consumer, um, and just kind of make it like it is in the rest of the sport. There's a new centralized design, uh, lightweight components that's gonna be composite materials, alloy steel, aluminum, and magnesium in the sled to you know, help reduce the weight. There's a new belt drive with uh, fewer moving parts and that's gonna also make it easier to service. I believe that's just gonna be on the alpha sleds. I don't think that there's a belt drive on the trail and crossover sleds, but if there is, I will update in the uh, subtitles down below. You no longer need any tools to remove the hood and side panels on the Procross. It was pretty toolless except for the center hood. There was a, a bolt down below that you had to take out to get the center hood off. And uh, so it's kind of nice to see that come forward, kind of like Polaris is. I believe the new Skidoo's are that way, but I know the G4 wasn't, so I'm um, kind of becoming more normal in the sport. For a while there, taking sleds apart was a nightmare, so happy to see that for Articat too. There's improved ergonomics. As you can see, it's kind of a more rider forward chassis. The Pro Cross was always a little bit more set back. I think it gave kind of a more relaxed riding position. Um, it looks like, as you can kind of see by the profile of the sled itself, you're gonna be move more forward to start with and then able to kind of move around the side panels because they're a little bit slimmer as well. The new 600 they put in it is a lay down style and it's also brought further back in the chassis so that's going to give the sled a lower center of gravity and kind of move you up over the engine to keep all the weight in the middle of the sled which is definitely a good thing kind of like a, a sport bike would be. Um, I could definitely see a lot of advantages with that. And last, uh, Articat will have a lockable like bag system, kind of like Lock and Ride from Polaris, Link from uh, Skidoo, and theirs will truly be lockable. So um, if, if you're worried about things getting taken uh, at your lunch stop or things like that, you'll actually be able to, to lock your bags and make sure they don't disappear while you're eating. The next thing I wanna talk about is the new engine. So there's not gonna be, as far as we know so far, in 2024 when the sled's released, anything but a 600. That new 600 does have some carryover components from the 6000 SeaTac, but it does have some new components. So it has a new crankshaft, it's got new timing to improve the running quality of the sled, and it also has a new fuel system that's gonna create kind of a symmetry between all the Articat sleds. I guess, according to Articat last season, the 600 and the 800 had different fuel systems, so um, this new fuel system is going to be something that's used across all the sleds. For now, that's kind of all we've heard. Um, the only other thing that I've kind of been able to dig up from Articat is this is a chassis they've been working on for 10 years. So kind of between the Textron um, transition period and everything that's been going on, they've had all that time to work on the sled. So hopefully it's a really well developed, really well ironed out sled. Um, in person, it looks very impressive. It's got a lot going on. It's definitely not just like, you know, a chassis with some slightly different ergos. Like they've put a lot of work into it from what I saw. So I'm um, happy to see that. And apparently Articat will be doing demo rides with these new sleds this year. They haven't announced where yet, but they are fully planning to do demo rides. And I think that's gonna be awesome for all of us to get to try these things out and actually see what we think of them on snow. All right, so now for my opinion portion. Um, there's definitely a few things I, I've been thinking of in this whole this whole experience of watching this new sled come out. Um, when they released it, I have to say I, I'm stoked. I mean, this is everything I wanted in Articat coming out with a new chassis. It, it's a much slimmer chassis. When you see it in person, you can really tell like this is probably a two-stroke only chassis. Um, not to say they won't have some way of widening it up to make it a, also a four-stroke, but for now, for the mountain, for the crossover, for the trail, it's so far just a two-stroke chassis. 
Now, the reason I think that's a big deal is because as all the other brands have made their sleds lighter and slimmer and smaller, you know, the Pro Cross was a chassis that you could slap a four stroke turbo right into it, three cylinders and all, and it would fit. And as awesome as that is to have that kind of versatility, I think in 2012, you really weren't giving anything up. I mean, that sled really took a huge leap forward, very capable, I think, almost lost nothing. But as it got older, by the 2022, 2023 model year, you were kind of starting to give something up. Um, your ability to move on the chassis, you know, the, the lighter weight of the entire sled, the size overall, the Pro Cross, I'll say when you see it in person, it's a pretty big sled. This uh, new Catalyst chassis, when you see it in person, it looks slim, it looks small, almost smaller than the Matrix, which in my opinion is one of the smallest looking sleds out there. So I I'm really happy to see Articat take that leap, build a two stroke only chassis for now. Um, when the four strokes come down the line, which I'm sure they will, uh, hopefully it's just widening it up a little bit. But um, I think that was a crucial step to the success of this sled. Kind of two engine things I wanna comment on. Number one, obviously we all know there's only 600 the first season. Uh, not unheard of, they did it with the Rush back in the day. You know, it's not, not that crazy of a thing to see, but I will say I haven't heard them talk about it being any sort of class leading power yet. Um, not to say that there might not be a video out there that they do talk about that, but in what I saw, they just talk about how the chassis being light and being small is gonna help this engine perform very well and be and make the sled itself very competitive in, the, in that segment. So um, take for that what you will. I'm hopeful that whatever sled is their big bore option will be at least an 850 or a 900. Um, I know Articat's been very big in the past on our 800s, just as competitive as the 850s. And this will probably upset Articat guys, but I've owned them all. I had a 2020 Riot 8000, uh, 2019 Polaris 850 Patriot. I've had two 850 E-Tex. It's not, it's just, it's not as good on fuel. It's not as fast. Um, it's not as like lively of an experience as far as the power down low, um, top speed on top, everything like that. So. I just really hope there's an 850 to 900, not only because I think that'll push it, you know, to hopefully bring that extra bit of performance, but bragging rights are a lot. And I'm sure Articat guys are tired of talking about how their 800 makes as much power as an 850. It's just, you know, it just isn't something that you want to talk about after a while. So hopefully it's at least an 850, if not a 900, and uh, at least in the bar you have your bragging rights, and then on the lake, you know, hopefully with the, the extra size and the, the development they seem to be putting into this engine, because from what I'm hearing through Articat so far, this is the engine that they're, they're gonna make shine. Like this is their focus and it's gonna be something really impressive. One other kind of cool article I found that I thought I would talk about a little bit, Articat Cross Country Racers got to try this sled out in the spring and share their thoughts on it. Um, they didn't give too much information away. I don't know if they're not quite allowed to yet, but there were some, some interesting takeaways and I'll, I'll kind of go over those now. One of the first things that they talked about was the new steering post and how it effectively makes a sled feel like it has power steering. Um, this is kind of something we've heard in Skidoo race sleds and I know with the rack steering on the XRS, it's supposed to give a lighter steering feel, but from what the Articat riders are saying, like this is the one. Like this one, even though it's not true power steering, reduces steering effort significantly, and it makes overall for a sled that, you know, you don't need all that steering input. I know the Pro Cross can be kind of heavy at times. You can set it up very well, but um, I know it's been a struggle for my dad on it, so uh, interested to see the difference there. They called the Catalyst a very rider active chassis, so more rider active than the Pro Cross, which immediately clicked for me because something I always said about the Pro Cross was you didn't need to move to make it go fast. Um, it did kind of cap you out after a while because you moving your body didn't change the way the sled handled. Uh, according to them, moving around on this sled has a very big effect on the way it handles. So you can kind of see the way the panels are shaped and how it seems like you'd be able to move around that that was their goal. Like, build a sled that you can hopefully move around on and then design it from there so that when you do move, it performs even better. Uh, that's almost kind of like the Matrix is. 
you get that inside ski lift, but because of that, if you move to keep the sled under control, you can almost get the outside ski to bite harder. So I'd be curious to see if that's kind of something that happened with this. And uh, it's just very interesting, in my opinion, to see the Articat racers calling it a rider active sled compared to the Procross. And then just one last thing that stuck out um, to kind of go along with you know the, the composite components and all the strength that's built into this sled. The Articat riders said after you put quite a bit of time on the Procross chassis, you do start to feel the chassis loosen up between your legs. Uh, they said after 1500 miles on the Catalyst, they didn't feel that at all. So um, that's very cool in my opinion. And uh, I, I look forward to seeing how these sleds hold up with all of these new parts that aren't necessarily so common in the sport. Some takeaways from seeing the sled in person. Um, these are for sure prototypes, like the ski tips are painted. They're not like a, a molded colored plastic. Um, the panels look like they're painted as well, so it's hard to get a, a full idea for exactly what the sled's going to look like, but you get a lot of the idea of the shape, the way the panels meet, all that stuff. Um, I'm very impressed with the size of the sled and the ability it looks like we're going to have to move around on this chassis. Um, they're, they're up on like uh, displays at all the shows it seems like, so no one's really been able to sit on them yet. But it looks like you know you kind of have like a flat angled back on the panel and then it also tapers out to allow you to like sit in tight and then just kind of shift out um, it kind of reminds me in some ways of the g4 in a lot of ways of the matrix so kind of a cool little mix between the two and i think it's going to really make for a rider active sled which in my opinion was one of the biggest things i was looking for from articat and it looks like they did that so that's awesome to me it doesn't look like any of the rear suspensions are upgraded the alpha looked the same the um, slide action is still in the trail version and then the cross action is still in the riot so those all appear to be the same rear suspensions um, take from that what you will would i have liked to see a slide action upgrade yes um, do i think it's going to be a major detriment no i don't think that the, the rear suspension is bad by any means um you know it would have been cool to kind of see it all come you know, new, but I understand, I'm sure, why they did it. There's so much other development that went into the rest of the sled that that'll probably be something down the line they do, and it'll make for a good upgrade. So Front suspension-wise, um, they all look like they have new front suspensions, and I'm pretty sure they obviously do. They have updated spindles. The uh, reservoirs on the shocks for the trail model are actually turned inside now, um, so that's a change. Uh, the Riot did not have reservoirs on the shocks. It looks like it kind of a more base model shock package. I don't know if that's all it'll come with, but for now that seems to be the case. And I will say it looked very narrow. Um, the front end almost looked as narrow as like a Riot X, but I, I couldn't really get any specs in that moment on the front end of the Riot. So um, that's just kind of a quick takeaway from looking at it. I don't, I think this is just the regular Riot, so, you know, I'm assuming that there'll be an even narrower front end with maybe an Alpha Rail and the Riot X, but um, who knows, maybe this is a sled that's meant to compete more with the backcountry a little bit and uh, kind of be a little bit more off-trail crossover focused than, you know, on-trail crossover focused, so uh, that'll be a, a, an interesting takeaway as time comes, but for now, that's just definitely something that stood out to me. The looks are obviously a very subject subjective thing, but I like them. I think the sled looks really interesting, and I'll say like everybody makes fun of the eyebrow thing, but um, I think Articat many times has like pushed the looks envelope and kind of taken the sport to a new place. When they put the big tall spindles on the um, first few of the sleds that ran that, so like the Snow Pro 600, and then when they put it in the Pro Cross, I remember that being such like a big conversation point, and now nobody even notices it, you know what I mean? Um, I think adding that little LED is kind of cool, and the uh, asymmetry in it is kind of interesting in my opinion. Um, and the rest of the sled has a very cool look that's kind of a combination of like the old Snow Pro 600, not old, old, but like, you know, last year's Snow Pro 600, mixed with the Blast, kind of a, a step forward from the Pro Cross, you know, you can still see some of the DNA in there. Um, but yeah, I think overall really good looking sled and I'm excited when, you know, they start to do more with like color combos and graphics packages to, to see what they can do, because as we all know, the first year of a chassis is usually kind of a more subdued color combo. So yeah, to wrap it up, I mean, I'm super excited for Articat. Um, I think this is the, all the right steps forward that they needed to make 
Do I wish we knew a little bit more about the engines? For sure. Um, but you know, being a 2024 model, there's plenty of time to get there. And um, from what I've seen so far, it, like I said, they did everything right. So this, this is what they needed to do. Um, I think guys are gonna really like this. I think it's gonna make Articat competitive just from a chassis strictly standpoint. And then if they can knock out some really great engines, I don't know if they're gonna be working with Yamaha on them or, or what that might look like, but if they can do that, I think this sled's gonna really bring them back. And um, that's what Articat needs, you know. At the end of the day, no matter what, having at least three brands, you know, I know there's Yamaha, I know there's Lynx, we need that in the sport. We don't need just two. Like we need these brands all pushing each other. And I'm sure you guys have heard that a million times, but no matter what, I'm always gonna root for Articat because of that. And I truly do really enjoy their sleds. Um, I might have grown a little long in the tooth with the Procross, but um, I'm super excited for something new to come along. And ideally I can't wait to try one out. So I hope you guys are excited too. Let me know down below what you thought of it or what you expected, maybe didn't get, or what you're expecting down the road as far as like a 800cc uh, two stroke of some sort. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next video.